All right, this is wrecked. Baby Drag's not going to get the wizard tower. Oh my god, you have got to... That wizard tower has one HP on it. And what is the queen doing? She is beating a wall. Why? Why, queen? Get that wizard. Nope. Rip. What's going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you a brand new video and I have a very special video in store for you today. This is week three CWL premiere Fortune Steel versus WHF2 the final 115 to 109 a solid six star victory for everybody over in Forge from Steel one of the best performances we've probably ever had in any uh, competitive, you know, CWL competitive war from premiere to invite back to premiere. This was the war that we would love to model every single war after. Uh, considering the fact that we had 11 10 v 10 three stars this war and we, we actually improved quite a bit at 10 v 11. Uh, the breakdown to this war, 5, 17, 18, so a pretty heavy breakdown for Premier. Uh, and we'll go ahead and show you guys each side of the map. We cleared tens for the third CWO war in a row. Uh, WHF2 did, as you guys see, they did leave up a couple uh, Town Hall 10s. And we even had a couple, or we had one Town Hall 11 get away from them. Uh, but this was an incredible war, uh, an incredible performance from Forge from Steel. Uh, we will go ahead and take a look at one Town Hall 9 attack before we get into the heavy hitter action. As far as WHF, I'm pretty sure that they would have hoped for a better performance. I know uh, this season over the last three wars, they have been struggling 10v10, but they are looking solid in a lot of other categories. Uh, so they do have you know, quite a bit to improve on. It's obviously not the war that they were hoping for. Uh, but WHF2 still very, very strong in Premier. They're sitting at 1-2 and two on the season. FFS currently sitting at 2-1. We're going to go ahead and uh, check out this attack from Moose. Uh, going to be doing a Kill Squad Lolo. We'll play this in the back background. I'll go ahead and throw the stats up on the screen uh, for FFS. There we go. So again, 11 10v10 3 stars. We went 4 for 8 10v11. Uh, one of those Town 11s did get away from us. We did try for hit at a very solid 62 percent we did have quite a few scouts on the bases uh that we you know were really looking uh to get those three stars on uh for whf two stats uh they had three 10 v 10 three stars uh they went or uh, they cleared three out of our five town hall 11s uh one of them they tried for a 11 v 11 attempt uh, the other base they just have to unfortunately leave one starred. Uh, they did go nine for nine on their dip, so, so very solid on their dip game. And their Town Hall nines, they did have to dip one of our nines. They did hit at 57% uh, Town Hall nine hit rate. But like I said, top to bottom, left to right, uh, this was a very good performance by Fortune Steel. We had five Town Hall tens that got six packs. Yes, five of our Town Hall tens got six packs this war so really really i mean just an incredible performance and we do have a couple of those to show you guys and even a few of those being fresh uh, so we'll go ahead and get into the heavy hitter, heavy hitter action big shout out to moose doing it with a solid uh kill squad lalo very strong attack right now at town hall 10 but without further ado let's get into the heavy hitter action we got cotton eye joe rejoining the clan he went on a semi-retirement long vacation, but he is now back in the dude six-pack this war. Uh, one of those using bitch, this one is obviously gonna be a uh, CB uh, hobo. So we'll go ahead and check out this attack. Uh, one thing I know is about WHF2, unless they know something I don't know, they were running a lot of Hound CCs. Uh, not really sure why. Uh, for the for the majority of Town Hall 10s aren't, aren't even running heavy CCs with the exception uh, of bases, but they were running a lot of Hound CCs, so we were able to do things like this, getting incredible value from suing the uh, doing a 
for suing, suiciding the queen at six o'clock, picking up a wizard tower, an archer tower, a bomb tower, and also helping with funneling for the kill squad. And one golem with eight bowlers behind him does absolute work. Uh, drop down wall breakers, got the wall pop, jump down uh, those bowlers all under rage, hoping to get uh, this other bomb tower out of the way. The enemy king, the enemy queen, enemy CC, just all kinds of value from this entry right here and a pretty cheap funnel, uh, just using a couple wizards, a couple bowlers, and that queen down at six. Set a beautiful funnel for that kill squad. Hogs coming in, starting here down at the bottom where he's able to, to directly target that single shot Inferno Tower that was in between the two storages. More hogs coming in at nine o'clock. Uh, second heal spell is down, and he has one more heal spell, and look at what's left. We just have a pair of Teslas, and we have an Archer Tower and a Cannon. Uh, so, I mean, better be safe than sorry, but damn near could have ended up swagging that heal spell. But a beautiful attack by Cotton Eye Joe, AKA Mark, and getting a six pack. Uh, the majority of these, because uh, there were so many town hall, uh, so many of our tens got six packs. Uh, we won't be show, we'll be showing one attack pretty much from each one of the six packs. And we will be showing you guys, we didn't have any 11 11s, uh, like I said, but we will be showing you guys one uh, epic 10 uh, v 11 at the very end. So definitely stay tuned for that. Next up, we have Fuzz. This was the all star right here, you guys. Fuzz getting a, what did he get? He got a, did he get a 12 pack? Fuzz getting a freaking 12 pack this war. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at one of these attacks. Was it a, yeah, it was a 12 pack. Uh, Fuzz doing work this war, you guys. And this was, this was a cleanup attack, uh, but we do have one of his attacks uh, that we'll be showing you guys in a different video uh, that was a fresh three star two. Fuzz getting two, uh, two of his 10v10s were fresh. But here we go, we're doing a queen walk bitch using giants. Uh, where you went ahead and started queen down at uh, six o'clock. She's me walking up to three. You see the uh, witch bowler flank at nine o'clock going up to 12. And uh, we have a, a jump and notice right here in the core, notice that he did not jump into this core. He went, there's only a couple point defenses there. Went ahead and let the kill squad, that main push beat through the wall. So that way that jump spell gave him access to the inferno tower on the backside since he did not send the queen in, uh, but ends up completely smoking this base. And this is when you know you've had a successful bitch attack is when you have the flank that you started with. Make, look, the, the flank, that bowler witch flank that started at nine o'clock has made its way to 12 o'clock. And yes, it will be surviving the remainder of the raid. We'll go ahead and times this a little bit as we do have a, quite a few more attacks to get through, but Fuzz definitely the MVP of this war getting a 10 v 10 12 pack huge huge shout to him all right guys next up we have suga e aka geo and this is one of the newest members i believe this this was his first cwo war with i think he did a, a, like a random spin with us this was his first cwo war with us uh and he uh, this was uh one of his uh 10 v 10s and look at the value up here that he is going to get from this walk as you guys see, Queen getting a bomb tower and two wizard towers, that alone is so much value, even if you sue a queen up there. Uh, but he went ahead and wanted to go with the queen walk. And as you guys see, he does have king that's gonna meet up with queen. And he will be engaging the enemy king. Wanted to save abilities, so went ahead and dropped down a rage to go ahead and take care of him. Uh, but here we go, uh, king down here at nine o'clock, uh, just funneling all of this, uh, all this trash out here before he goes and sends in uh, his kill squad, as this is going to be um, a go-ho go attack. So here we go. Uh, Queen breaking into that main compartment right there. This is a big drag coming out of the CC. Went ahead and dropped a poison for it as he is charging uh, this uh, big compartment right here. Charging straight into that air defense. Queen on queen action with his queen under rage. He is going to go ahead and take that queen out. This is actually, no, this is not a go-ho. This is going to be a, a, uh, just a queen-ho attack. Hogs coming in from the top, sending in more hogs on the test to target the Tesla and target uh, the mortar on the upper right-hand side of the base. First heal spell is down. Use two rages for the queen, and he went ahead and he's going to be using three heal spells uh, for the hogs. And you can see the pathing. 
uh, after you charge that compartment and wiped out those defenses in me queen uh, the pathing is pretty clear where these hogs are going to be headed and that last heal spell is going to be covering the bomb tower and the wizard tower down here at the bottom of the base and gets a nice split right here after those hogs take out that sweeper they're gonna go ahead and target uh, that single shot inferno tower and we'll go ahead and times this and the last defense down is going to be that tesla and look at all those wizards he's got about six wizards that he brought to go ahead and clean up this base uh, make sure he did not have a time fail uh cc last building to go down and a huge shout out uh to geo uh in his first suit at cwo board getting a 10 v 10 three star for us uh so huge shout out to him uh huge shout out to me again i uh, did not get a three star on my main account uh but i i did jump on cg to go ahead and clean up this base you guys uh we're gonna be doing a shattered hobo on this base and it's a fully fully maxed defense base um so definitely much trickier than hitting something like a tier one or a tier two we got golems on each of the teslas baby dragon to go ahead and help set the funnel we got queen also going to help with the funnel uh jump spell is down we're gonna go ahead and send in five bowlers once they make their way we're going going to we're gonna go ahead and drop down king there he goes once they uh, take the jump we'll go ahead and drop down that rage uh, to try to get good value from this push right here we want to go ahead and take out both enemy heroes go ahead and wipe out the bomb tower uh the expo and carve out a nice defense path uh for these hogs and we'll go ahead and drop down one giant over here uh, to go ahead and start targeting some of these defenses and here comes the hogs and notice i did bring wall breakers on this attack but that is not for uh, an entry this is actually to help trigger the giant bombs on the outside of the base uh, just dropping down anywhere from two to three wall breakers uh, it's obviously going to be once an attack is already scouted uh, but definitely something to take note of and also another thing to take note of why i failed this base on my first attack is i did not bring a miner if you guys are looking at a base and there's a whole bunch of trash that's what a lot of uh, people are starting to do uh, to help uh, combat hogs is they're putting a lot of random trash buildings inside the base, builder huts, gold mines, storages, things like that inside the base. Um, so make sure you don't have a time fail uh, like I did. Make sure you bring that miner. That was the big difference in this raid was bringing that one miner. There he goes, taking out the gold mine. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and take out the storage. But that one miner can definitely uh, change the outcome in a raid. But that's gonna do it. That was my uh, 10v10 three star from this war want to get there and out to you guys and especially dropping those wall breakers to pop those bombs absolutely loved it all right another new addition uh to force from steel is this guy right here black panther and coming in red hot getting a 10v10 six pack uh so and, and uh an attack we're not seeing a lot i don't even know why I absolutely love this attack a straight up um vaho wait until you guys see this and this is going to be a Hound CC. Like I said, they were running quite a few Hound CCs. Uh, but look at this value. Taking out a couple different uh, point defenses and splash, uh, suing that queen. And in doing so, you're also setting the funnel for the kill squad. So we got King down, uh, bringing nine Valkyries to this attack. So very, very heavy push. But if you guys see, he still had, because he didn't bring a Golem, he's still bringing 27 Hogs and seven out of the clan castle. So definitely something to think about. Valks are very, very powerful. Um, even if they're getting targeted by, by splash defenses and things like that, um, Valks under rage rip through a core so damn fast. It's incredible. But Hogs starting up at the top, we, we are going to be having three heal spells for them. Again, just a jump and a rage for the kill squad, three heals for the Hogs. And they're just making their way, like you guys are seeing on all these attacks, trying to create a nice L-shaped defense path for those Hogs. Uh, I mean, clearly textbook uh, right here goes ahead and drops down the third and final heal spell covering that wizard tower, the archer tower, the bomb tower, and it's pretty much uh, just a couple more defenses left. He's already starting cleanup. Again, make sure you always start your cleanup right where uh, you start your hogs at. You do not want to get a time fill on these attacks. It is detrimental uh, to your ego without a doubt. Uh, but here we go. Hogs uh, cleaning up down at the bottom. We got wizards cleaning up at the top. Black Panther getting it done. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe one of his attacks 
was a uh, fresh 10v10. I might be mistaken, but regardless, he did have a 10v10 uh, six pack this war. So huge, huge shout to him. And obviously welcome to Forge from Steel. But uh, that is gonna do it for the 10v10 action. Now we're gonna go ahead and check out uh, one of our 11v11, or 11v11, we did not have 11v11 three star. One of our 10v11 attacks coming from Soggy doing a classic 420. Riggs was a 420, it's not what you're thinking. 420 is four golems, 20 bowlers. Uh, just doing a, a golem bowler uh, or bowler smash up, up at 12. Same thing over at three o'clock, setting in two more golems. The rest was bowlers and bowlers coming out of the CC with the heroes in behind. Went ahead and dropped down that quad quake, making sure that everything funnels into that uh, town hall to make sure you have a strong push with that rage to make sure you get uh, that second star from that town hall. Still has queen ability, goes ahead and pops it right there. Queen's gonna go ahead and take out uh, that town hall. And even bowlers, look at this, rock skips down here off of the collector. Uh, it's a very, very strong attack on the right style of bases, these ring style bases. Uh, but Soggy getting it done with a 420 and this was a fresh 10v11 attack. Big war um, for our 10v11 guys, two of them, uh, two guys, was it two guys? Uh, went ahead and had four packs this war, ending at 56%, very, very solid. Um, and again, just doing it with a classic 420 uh, bowler smash. Huge shout to Soggy. But uh, that is going to do it, you guys, for this recap. I wanna give a big shout out to everybody in Forge from Steel. Huge shout out to everybody over in WHF2. Good luck in the rest of your season. This was a huge war for Forge from Steel putting up 11 10v10s and moving us to 10-1 on the season. And these wins always feel good uh, when you get a win going into the bye week. So finishing strong, gonna enjoy the bye week, and uh, hopefully we can be um, we can be this strong against Gahazi Bomber 2. But that is gonna do it for this uh, video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Smack that like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already comments, questions, or concerns down in the comments section below. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.